starting here, I'll share my screen. Okay, so uh, this is the fourth session uh, of the workshop for, for building a successful online and hybrid course. And just to review what I've done so far, this again is my programming for analytics course. And I have a welcome page here, a course introduction page. It's the first page that the students are going to see. Uh, I then um, uh, integrated my MindTap course, that's the Cengage platform, with my course in Blackboard, my course shell, so my students can simply sign into Blackboard, click on that link, go into MindTap, and if you use other platforms such as MyLab or, or Connect, uh, you can do the same thing with those as well. And then I went ahead and I broke out all of my weekly modules. So uh, I have the learning objectives, I have readings, which have direct links to MindTap. These are called deep links, or in Cengage calls them uh, learning mind, uh, Cengage learning mind links. And these will open the readings as well as the assignments, right, directly from Blackboard. I also created some in-class assignments in Blackboard. I did one for each lecture and I created quizzes as well. And I went ahead and set up Respondus for each one of my quizzes. Okay. Um, now, let's see. Okay, so I what I also did um, after the last session is I created a, what I call the lockdown browser test which is something I'm going to ask my students to do over the weekend, the first week of, of classes. And this simply asks them to answer a question. Oops. And it's a true or false question. So it, again, I created a test like I did last session. And I have my question that says, before submitting your answer, please click the MindTap link above in the instructions area to ensure you can open and access the e-text during quizzes or end exams. So I want to make sure that this will work for them, that Respondus works for them, and then they just answer this, programming is fun, true or false. Uh, and I have a description that says, once you've downloaded and installed the lockdown browser, please use this test to ensure it's working on your system before the first quiz. And then this is due Sunday, 816. And I count it as an in-class assignment. So it doesn't weigh very much, but it is something to kind of get them in there using the Respondus Lockdown Browser, making sure that links will work for them right, before they take their first actual quiz. OK. Um, and then I also just have a little um, item here that says, please review the course syllabus. So this is all they're doing week one, which is just one day of class, really. So I'm asking them to review the syllabus. Um, maybe I'll have another item in here that says to register with MindTap. So I should have that there as well. So I want them to review the syllabus, register with MindTap, and then make sure the lockdown browser is working for them. OK. OK. So that's it. So I'm pretty much all set now. Now, the only thing I need to do is um, schedule my lectures. And I do that using Collaborate Ultra. So what I did here is I created a link for Collaborate Ultra on the left-hand side. The way I did that is I went ahead and I hovered over the plus sign up here. I selected Tool Link. Okay. Now, you can call this whatever you want. It. I called it Collaborate Ultra. You can call it class meetings if you want. And then select the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra type and click Submit. OK, and then you'll see it right up here. OK, now I call mine Collaborate Ultra, so I'm just going to keep that one. But that's basically all I did to create that. OK, and then this takes them to the Collaborate Ultra application within Blackboard, OK? Now, the way that you manage your sessions is totally up to you. 
So different instructors like to do it different ways. The way I do it takes a little bit more work on the instructor's side, but it makes it a lot easier for students to figure out how to attend your sessions um, and how to access the recordings and view the session that they missed, okay? So you'll notice here, they give us a course room, and this is by default given to all of the Blackboard shells. And if you wanted to, you can just use this course room as your lecture. So you can say, look, join this course room every, you know, my, my, in my case, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, come here from at 1.30 to 2.30. And within your course room, you can, and when you click on this, it will actually open up a, a Blackboard Collaborate session like we see here. And you can come here to the left-hand side, hit the record button, and then it will go inside of your recordings when the class is done. Now, the way you access your recordings is you click on this menu button. By the way, this is very unintuitive. And I usually send out an email to the class after my first session and I say, this is how you access the recording because nobody can ever find it. But you hit this menu button here and you come down here to recordings and all your recordings will be here. Okay, so that's the easy way. Just use the course room. You have to remember to hit that record button, by the way, because it does not record by default. Now, those of you teaching the hybrid or high flex format, my understanding is, and I've actually tried to confirm this with IT, I haven't heard back from them yet, but my understanding is that in the classroom, you're going to have this matrox technology um, that can record different areas of the room, I believe. Um, and basically what that does is by the by automatically it will record to ensemble. OK, so ensemble can be accessed from if you're in my Stetson and if you click on resources, there's a link here to ensemble. And it's the URL is stetson.ensemblevideo.com. This is where all of the recordings will be from the classroom. OK, so IT manages all of this. And you could probably send your students here to view the recordings. Um, you could also, from Blackboard, if, if let's say you wanted to put your recordings here in your, in your, um, in your class uh, session, I mean your, um, I'm sorry, your module content page, you can go to, I think it's in build content and click on ensemble video. And I believe you can probably create a link from here. Search for video. Yeah, so you can search for your video and select it and then add it to your page. Now I've never done this, but I believe this is a way you can do it if you want. Instead of saying, hey, go to the ensemble page, you can go ahead and put a link in here. Um, once I get back, once IT gets back to me, hopefully um, I'll find maybe an easier way of doing this. Maybe some of you have already attended the session and maybe they went through this. I'm not sure. But um, from my understanding is if you... Uh, whether you are using the in-class technology or not, okay, you will still need to, if you want to use Collaborate Ultra, okay, you will still need to come into here, go into Collaborate Ultra, and record your session for Collaborate Ultra. Okay, so you have to remember to do that because that's not going to happen automatically whether you have the technology or not in the classroom. Okay, now once you do that, as I mentioned, if you're using Collaborate Ultra, you will see it here in the recordings area, okay? Now, what I do personally is I keep this locked. So I go here to the ellipsis on the side. I say lock course room. I don't want the students to be able to enter this room. And the reason is because I actually create a session for each one of my lectures. Now, again, this takes longer, but I do it for a couple reasons. For, for one, it's easier for the student to find the lecture that they want to attend. So for instance, I already set up one for introduction that's on 814, and I'm about to set up the one for my first lecture uh, the next the following Monday. Okay, so I'm gonna go to create session. 
And I like to break it out like this. So I'll say something like chapter one, lecture one. Okay. Now my first lecture is going to be on, so my 14th is my introduction class. And then on the 17th, I'm going to hold a lecture. And, and so, uh, so I'm going to start it on the 17th. It's going to be from 1.30 p.m. Okay. And it's going to end on the 17th. Now it really ends at uh, 2.20, but I'm just going to put 2.30. OK. And now if I didn't have an end, I would say no end. It's an open session. So this, if I said no end open session, it would, it would start at the 17th, but it would always be open. So if you don't want to use the course room, you can create your own session that would act as a course room that's always open. You can also do a repeat session. So some have asked, you know, can I use Collaborate Ultra for my office hours? Yes, you can. And you may want to use a repeat session for that, right? So you can say my office hours are every Tuesday and Thursday from 8 to noon. So I'm going to make that a repeat session. And then this way, every every Tuesday and Thursday from 8 to noon, this session will open and students can join it. Okay, I'll do that in a bit. Right now, I'm just going to show you how I schedule my lectures. Okay, then I come to my session settings over here on the right. Okay, by the way, I do not click guest access. If you click guest access, it's open to everyone. If you don't click it, it's only open to those students that are registered in the course. Okay, so we all hear about these Zoom bombings that occur. If you don't allow guest access, you don't have to worry about Zoom bombings, right? Only the students that are in the class can attend. So then I go here to my options. The default attendee role will be participant. If you want students to um, share their screens, you can make them all presenters. You can also make them presenters within Collaborate. So that's usually what I do. If they go to share their screen, I make them the presenter at that time. So by default, they're all participants. Um, you can allow the recording downloads. Now, this is different from accessing a recording. You can always access the recording and watch it. But if you want them to be able to download it as a file, you would check this. By default, they can do that. So if you have, if you have concerns about students downloading your lectures and posting them on YouTube, don't click this, OK? Uh, anonymize chat messages. This is if you don't want to see who's chatting. If, of course, if you're in a classroom environment, you probably do want to see that. So we don't check that. Uh, profile pictures, uh, I don't check that either. OK, now the participants, you want them to be able to share audio, share video, post chat messages, and draw on the whiteboard. OK, so I'm going to check all that. OK, this one here, allow attendings to join the session using a telephone. I uncheck that. That's the only thing I change in this screen. I don't like them joining by telephones for a couple of reasons. Um, for one, it, you get students that call in when they're not at home. So they figure, well, I have to go out during class. So you know what? I'll, I'll just call in from a telephone. So that's number one. I'd rather them actually be sitting at a computer watching the lecture. Number two is it must be different. Now, I've never called from a phone, but I don't know if there's a way to mute it. I mean, I guess you can mute the phone on your end, but most students don't know how to do that. So whenever I used to get students calling in on a phone, I'd always hear in the background their car or, or some background noise, and it gets annoying. So I said, I'm going to cut out all telephone calls, so I don't check that. Okay. Now, if they're having trouble with their mic and they need to call in, to be able to communicate, then you can always go back and change this even during the session. Um, but I never had that occur. Okay, par participants can chat privately only with moderators. I don't check that. Moderators supervise all private chats. I don't check that. Um, and this high profanity in chat messages, I think this is new. I don't remember ever seeing this before, but I guess this will. Basically, if they type in some type of profanity, it will show asterisks instead of the actual words. OK, so that's it. And I'm going to hit Create. And here's my chapter one 
lecture one. This will be open on the 17th from 1.30 to 2.30. Now, what I usually do is I come in um, before the week and I create all of my lectures for that week. I don't create sessions for the entire semester. I mean, I guess you could do it in one shot if you want, but I just usually do it right before the start of the week and I have my three lectures for that week, okay? All right, now what if you wanted office hours, okay? What I do for my office hours is I unlock the course room. So this is, I use the course room for office hours. Um, but what I may do this semester is do something like this. We could do create session, call it office hours. Okay. And this could start, uh, let's make it the first day of class. And it doesn't matter. 1.30 p.m. Okay. 30 p.m. Okay. And um, I'm going to make it a repeat session. Okay. Now my office hours are uh, Tuesday and Thursday. So I'm going to click those days. This is going to repeat weekly every week. Um, and I'm going to say end on date and then just choose the last day of the semester and I'll just say November 30th okay and that's it okay and then also I'm going to uncheck the telephone okay now one question I get asked a lot is what if I want to have my office hours for all my students the problem with this is this is only open to my students in my programming class so if I want to have my office hours available to all my students, what I can do is I cre can create the office hours here in my programming class and I can check guest access. OK, and I want my guests to have I'm going to say presenter because I may want them to show their screen. And then it says when we save the session, we're going to get a guest link. So we're going to hit create. OK, this is going to give me this link here. OK. I could click on say copy. Now it says use control C. So you still, even though you click this, you still have to hit control C to copy it. Okay, and then we hit save. Okay. So here's my office hours here. Okay, this is recurring. And, um, uh, oh, did I give it a time? No, okay, I see what I did. All right, so I'm gonna edit my thing. Actually, I want them, to start on this Tuesday, and I want it to be every 8 a.m. Okay. To and I want it to end at noon, 12 o'clock p.m. My office hours. Okay. Hit save. Okay. So here they are. Okay. So here's all my office hours here. They can click on and and get into, okay. All right. And now that I have that link, you can do something like this. You can say, um, you can create a, uh, I don't know, would it be a web link? We could try, let's try that. So let's do something like this. Let's say, well, I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make it a content area. I'm gonna call it office hours, available to users, I'll submit it. Okay, and they can click on this. And now here I can do a web link. Um, here it is, web link. Okay, put the URL here that they gave me, call this office hours. And then maybe I could do a little text here, office hours per every Tuesday and Thursday from 8 a.m. It's a little bigger. There we go. Submit. Okay, so now they click in office hours. Office hours occur every Tuesday from 8 a.m. to noon. If they click on this, 
It will. Now, I don't want to click on it because I think it may affect because we already have a collaborate session open. But if you click on this, it will open up the collaborate session for that. Now, what you can do, because it is a web link, you can go into all your other classes and post the post the office hour link here, just like I did in all your other classes. And even though this is a collaborate session inside of my programming class, I can have it open for everyone because I created it as a guest. I created, I clicked guest access in the settings. Okay. Okay. So that's how you schedule your sessions in Ultra. Now, some of you like to use Zoom. Some of you like to use um, Teams. So I'm going to show you how you can use Zoom. Now, Zoom is a little, Zoom is a little bit different. So is Teams. Um, if you come up here and you click on um tool link there is no type for your zoom meetings or your microsoft teams meetings okay you can only click create this link if you do blackboard collaborate but what you could do if you like to use zoom is you can make a content area okay and you can call it again i'll call it class meetings okay and i'll drag it up here OK, and then once you're in your content area, this is where you're going to go to build content and you can say Zoom meetings or you can click Microsoft Teams. OK, I don't really like the way Teams works um, in Blackboard. Uh, it's a little clunky, but uh, I can demonstrate it if you'd like. But uh, let's Zoom because this is what I think the majority of the instructors like to use. OK. And then we're going to name it. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to open up all the Zoom meetings. So I'm not going to name it like Chapter 1, Lecture 1, like I did for the Collaborate. I'm, again, just going to call it Class Meetings, OK, and hit Submit. OK, now what happens is when they click on this, it opens up Zoom inside of um, inside of Blackboard. And I created an introduction here, too. I have to delete this. But anyway, because I don't use Zoom. But if I did, right, I cre already created the introduction um, meeting here. And I can schedule a new meeting. And now this one I can call Chapter 1, Lecture 1, which I'm going to hold on the four, uh, uh, 17th at 1.30. Oops. 30 p.m. and this is going to be an hour long and that is it here's a passcode I, I I don't want them to have a passcode so I'm going to uncheck that okay uh, video host participant oh we probably want to turn these on right audio now this is where I'm going to say I just want them to have computer audio here are some other options here um, Okay, I'll just keep those on all unchecked. Okay. And that's it. It's all we now. Um, then we can save this. Oh, here's record the meeting automatically. I wish this, this is what I wish Collaborate had because sometimes I forget to go in there and hit record. So you could record the meeting automatically here in Zoom. Okay. And oh, only authenticated users can join. I'm, I'm not sure what that. Sign into Zoom. I, you know, I, I still think anyone can join this if they have a Zoom account and they know the ID. But again, unless they sign in the Blackboard, they're really not going to find it, right? This isn't something you're going to have to email to your students because they can just go into Blackboard now and get to it. Okay. And we're going to hit. I'll go ahead and check this. And I'll go ahead and. Uh, oh, and you can record it on your local computer, so it downloads a file or in the cloud. I'm going to select in the cloud, and I'm going to hit save. Okay. And that's it. And I'm not going to bother. Uh, here's the URL if you want to send it, but you don't need to. OK. And I'm going to go ahead back to my class meetings. OK. And here it is, Chapter 1, Lecture 1. So they can now come into here and click on Chapter 1, Lecture 1. When the meeting already occurred, this will be deleted or removed from the upcoming meetings section and it will go over here in cloud recordings so they can go and click in it if they miss class 
So this is nice. This is what's better about uh, Zoom is it's easy to find those cloud recordings if they miss class. Okay. Okay. And now, oops, I came out of the class. Okay, so this is class meetings. I'll rename this to class meeting Zoom. Okay, and now I'm going to show, and again, I, I, I don't like Teams even as a general tool for conferencing. Um, but I know some folks do. So I, again, I don't have much experience with it, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you how to integrate it if you want to. So I'm going to say class meetings Teams. Here we go. Whoops. And I'm going to say build content Microsoft Teams. And just like with Zoom, you have to create one single link here. OK, so now I have class meetings for Teams. And if you click on this, it launches Teams. You do have to sign in. OK, now you could create the meeting link. And here it is. Not much to this. Um, I'll make this August 14th at 1.30 p.m. to 2.30. OK, create. OK, meaning created. So that's it. Now, here's the, uh, here's the weird thing about Teams. So I created the, the meeting, OK? But now, the weird thing is, when I come back here and I click on class meetings, it goes ahead, and now I have to sign in again. And now it's, all my option is it's a meeting link. So it's kind of strange. And then what I realized is the class meeting that I just created, it goes into, I can't even find it now. I thought it went to the welcome page. It kind of got dropped somewhere. Maybe in, maybe, yeah, I'm not sure where it gets dropped. I have to find it. But they drop it somewhere. And last time I did it, I found it in my course introduction page um, at the bottom. I don't know where it is now. But, but anyway, I'll, I'll have to kind of see where it puts the meeting. Unless I had to go ahead and schedule it on my calendar. Maybe that's what I didn't do. So let me go ahead and click it again. OK, I'll just call this um, temp. And this will be today from 11. OK, I'll hit Create. And maybe I have to add the calendar. OK, that's what it is. OK, so you hit Add to Calendar. The meeting has been copied to the clipboard, and the meeting has been added to your calendar and course outline. OK, that's what I didn't do. OK, so now I close it, and then I believe it puts it in. Here it is. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, here. It's up here. So now what I can do is I can, I'd have to move this and just put it in my um, class meeting Teams link here. Hit Submit. There it is. So I mean, this isn't. Teams, unfortunately, integration isn't the best in Blackboard. But if you want to use it, there is a way to do it. Maybe there's an easier way. I'm just not sure. OK. So that's it. So that's how you would set up either your Teams meeting, your Zoom meeting, or your collaborate sessions. OK. Now I'm just going to go in quickly to show some of the options within Collaborate. So again, when you click on it, um, it will bring you into Blackboard Collaborate like, you're, like you did when you came into this class. And if you created the, the session, you are a moderator by default. And the first two things you want to do is you do want to do the, hit Start Recording up here. And then you want to come to the third button down here at the bottom. Go to Share Application Screen. You're going to click on this. Now, I'm already sharing, but you're going to click on that. It's going to 
ask you if you just want to share your screen or share an entire application. I do like to share my screen, um, but if you just wanted to share PowerPoint, you can. You have to open PowerPoint first and then say share the application PowerPoint. But since I'm always using the web and sometimes I use PowerPoint, it's just easier for me to share my entire screen. The only thing you have to be careful about is if you do share your screen, you just want to make sure you don't go into your grade book by accident or your email if you have some sensitive email that you don't want people to see. Right? You have to be pretty careful about what you actually show to the class. Um, if you wanted to do a whiteboard, right, you'll find that here also in this third tab. So you just here click share blank whiteboard. This gives you a whiteboard, which you can use if you have a, a tablet connected to your um, computer. And I think there is a there's a uh, mini grant that you can apply for. I'm not sure if that's still happening, but the mini grant you could buy, let's say, a tablet if you needed to. If you have a touch screen like I do, you can just, um, oh, I do have to select the pencil. Right, you just write over it on your screen, or if you have a, if you have a um, one of those styluses, you can do that. Um, you can write text on it. Right, so there's a lot of things you can do on the whiteboard if you if you'd like to do that, if you like to use it. Okay, so that's how we share a whiteboard. And, whoops. Okay, start, stop sharing the whiteboard. And I guess I got to go back and share my screen again. Okay. Um, you can share files. You can do polling here. So if you want to ask a question prior to class, or, or you know, you could just say, I want to, you know, multiple choice, and go ahead and put in your questions, and then you hit start, and then everyone can answer the question. Okay, so I don't really use this that much, but you know, you can say, is this session useful? Okay, and you can say something like yes, and the other one's a true false. No, okay, and then you hit start. Okay, and then you can go ahead and I guess start responding there. Yeah, so some yes is good. Okay, it's okay if you say no, but so that's it. So this is a good way to ask a question and get some responses to your student. Okay. All right. Um, and the other thing is, uh, yeah, and, and I will get the questions in just one bit. I know so you have a lot of questions here, but uh, okay, so I'll stop this. And then you can do breakout groups, right? So a lot of folks are asking about the breakout groups. What if I want my students to be in groups? You can click breakout groups. Now you can randomly assign, which is by default. You give the number of groups that you want. Right. So let's say you want to do four groups. It'll create based on the number of attendees. It'll group three groups with five attendees and one group will have four. Um, allow attendees to switch groups if they want to switch groups. OK, so then here you can see they, they assigned all the students here. And what's really neat is you can actually click and drag these to other groups. Right. So if you want to put a student in another group, just click and drag them. So that's good. And that's the same thing, by the way, if you want to do, uh, well, it just became custom assignment because I did click and drag. So when you click and drag as custom assignment, or even if you just choose custom assignment instead of randomly assign it, you can click and drag students into groups. And then you hit the start button. And when you hit start, your session will then become separate group sessions. So everyone will be able to kind of communicate with each other uh, within that group. And then um, I don't think you as a moderator will see it, but then once you hit the stop button, then you come back to the main session. So if you want them all to work together, now I've never used this because um, I guess I could have used it last semester because when I do my in-class assignments, when I'm in the classroom, I do say they can work together, right? And I don't, I, I don't say you have to, but I say if you want to work with your neighbor or whatever, you could, you can get together and work with them. So some students say, you know, they sit with their friends and they talk about the question and um, and, and that, that kind of works. 
Um, but I usually teach online in the summer where I don't have that many students necessarily in the class or, and then even attending the session to be able to do breakout groups. But I think I may use this um, in the fall. I think it's very helpful. So I could do breakout groups and I could say work with one another as you work on these assignments. Okay, and um, let's see. Okay, this is where your chat sessions are. So, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go to the second button first. This is where you see all your attendees. This is where you can click on the ellipse next to each of the participants and you can make them, remember I said you can make everyone a presenter before or you can just do it on the fly. This is how you can do it on the fly, right? So if Amanda, let's say, you know, if I asked a question and Amanda answered, or let's say she's even having a problem, you know, with her program and says, I'm having a problem with my program. Then what I would do is I would make her the presenter. And I do this in the classroom too. So if a student is working on a program and, and they're having issues, I will give them, we have technology in the classroom that allows them to display their screen onto the projector. And then we kind of discuss it as a class. So I could do the same thing here. I can make them the presenter and then they can then share their screen. That's really all I use here. And then of course, here's the chat in here. And if we click on here, we can see everybody's chat message. Um, most students, for some reason, they like to use the chat over the microphone. They prefer to do put their questions in the chat. And again, I don't know why that is. I mean, but if you think about it, I mean, they, it's a way they communicate on their phones too these days. Most students communicate using chat rather than actually talk on the phone. So that's okay. I don't require them to use their, their video and their mic. I do encourage them to do that. But if they're more comfortable, you know, asking questions on the chat, that's okay too. So that's basically it. Um, Zoom has a lot of these features. So if you use Zoom, you know, you may be familiar with them. If you'd like me to go over them, I could. Um, again, I don't use Zoom all that often, but, you know, they're pretty much similar in terms of the features, Collaborator Zoom. Okay. So I think that's it. What I can do is start addressing some questions. Uh, I don't know if Chris is in here. So I can go through the uh, questions that you're asking here in the chat. So record, Bonnie says, recordings from the new classroom so that will be directed to your Blackboard shell according to training they have from IT yesterday. Oh, okay. That is good to know. Thank you, Bonnie. Ben Brown will set this up in the background. Great. So, so in other words, Bonnie, I think what Bonnie is saying here, and, and what I can do is, whoops, I'm sorry. Let me take off mute. So everyone, so if you want to talk, you can, oops, I want to unmute all. Oh, I just muted everyone, but I don't want to. You should be able to unmute all. There we go. Okay. You can unmute us. All right. Thanks. Okay. So um, I think what Bonnie's saying is that what I was showing where you can create a link to Ensemble, it looks like IT will do that automatically, right? So inside of your shell you'll have a link to Ensemble that students can go to to get to the video. Is that right? No, I think they're, I think they're going to have a link that will take them directly to the videos and not even not even through Ensemble, what I understood. I didn't see it demonstrated, however, so I'm not sure. So would they go into their Blackboard shell and then see a link there? Yes. They're gonna, okay. They're, we'll put a link on your on your. In your individual shell, I don't remember what it's going to be called, but it will be clear what it is, and that's okay. where all the classroom recordings will will be stored. Okay, and that's great. It's supposed to happen automatically in the background without the instructor having to do anything. That's excellent. Okay, so thank you for that. So, yeah. so, um, so, in other words, I would say use Collaborate if you want to right with students that may not be in the classroom but in terms of recording it looks like it will still be recorded automatically through ensemble if you use this for office hours and 
that specific course can join, correct? Not, but you do, if you make it guess, then anyone can do it because they're gonna give you that guess link that you can give to anyone, all right? So you do allow guess and exactly right, Tara, okay? Will Collaborate notify faculty when someone makes an appointment for office hours on a day? Um, it will not. So, so the student will not actually make an appointment. They would have to communicate with you via email and say, hey, I'd like to come. I'm going to be coming to your office at this time, if that's OK. And then you just meet them at that time. So it's a, it is an open session during the office hours. But if you want to, by the way, Jennifer, you can always create a separate session. Let's say your office hours aren't good for the student. They can only meet at a certain time. And create a separate session for that student to meet at that time. Uh, how many students can be seen on screen? Uh, not many. And that is uh, a, uh, a flaw with the software that a lot of uh, faculty have issues with. You won't be able to see all of your students. Who you see are those that spoke last. So the ones that are speaking, where it's picking up the microphone, the screen and I think it shows up to um, I think it shows up to four yeah. depending on the um, depending on the view you have different options for viewing um, the folks that are showing their cameras uh, will students will students joining all hours or just enter existing video chat is there a way to have them join a queue yeah, unfortunately not. So it would be an open session and then they would just join the office. So you can't say, well, I'm meeting with this student. So, you know, um, so I'm going to schedule at a different time. So, um, yeah, so, so they would, you would have to basically be open. And if they, if they join while you're working with another student, you can tell them, can you please come back in a few minutes? Or they can basically sit there if you want them to and just, you know, stay quiet. Clever will not notify you, right? And the county someone's using Calendry, okay, to allow students to sign up for appointments during office hours. Good, and we'll know whom to expect. Okay, and Calendry uh, is Calendly through um, SSC, Bonnie? No, that you can do you can do the appointments through SSC, but Calendly is is a phone app, and it's oh. really it's really easy to set up. Okay, great, and they phone and. Yep. Okay. And, it, and you, you program in it what your what your availability is, and they pick. Okay. It it Calendly also works with Zoom. Um, I've got it set up, but I haven't used it yet. Okay. Great. Thank you for that information. Okay, uh, how does that Zoom meeting repeated? Let's say Monday, or Thursday. Um, was that in the options? Let me go back to Zoom. And Yeah, that is a good question. I don't, could you do a repeated meeting in Zoom? And that I'm not sure of. Let me schedule a new meeting and see what happens. When duration, oh, here it is, recurring meeting. Okay, so here's where you would do your recurring meeting. And you can say, let's say weekly and here we, here's where you would select Monday and Wednesday right at a certain time then you would have an end date or after so this is almost exactly what I was looking at in collaborate so just click the recurring meeting okay okay How would you take attendance at each collaborate session? Okay, so what I do, uh, Jennifer, is I basically look at the students that are here <clears throat> in the participants list, and I check them off. I, I always use a, I do everything electronically except for attendance. Attendance, I still print out a Excel worksheet, and I check it off manually. Um, 
to me, just doing quick checks by hand is quicker. So I look at the participants and I check them off and that's how I take attendance. Okay. Um, I set up teams for office hours by creating a team course using a web link to link to the course page through Blackboard. Good. So that's, yeah, that's a good way of doing it. It still seems to work to you, although you still have to sign in. Okay. That, and Holly, I would say that's probably even better than having to try the integration because that tool is very poor in my, in my opinion. So yeah, you could create the Teams meeting, right? And Teams runs on the web. So you just take that, they give you a link and you can post that link in Blackboard and then they click on it and it will take them. And I think it gives you an option, right? You click on that Teams link and it says, do you want to go to Teams on the web or do you want to use your application? So they can do whatever they want to do there. Okay. Do students need to make a Zoom account to log into our scheduled class session through Blackboard? I want to say yes, Boris. I think they do need a Zoom account to attend the session. Okay. And, and that was one of those options, wasn't it? At the bottom, um, only authenticated users can join. Okay, so yeah, if you check this, then they would have to have that Zoom account. That's probably what that is there. Okay, uh, just FYI, I applied for Brown Center COVID mini grant last week, told the funds, oh, they have been used up. Okay, thank you, Sam. Asked IT that question, no students, uh, Students do not have Zoom, but if you send them a Zoom link, they can participate in a Zoom session. Okay, but I think, Jennifer, probably if you check that, only authentication users, it may require them to create. I know I've been to some Zoom sessions as a participant where I had to have an account to join, and maybe that's what that checkbox does. How do you assign certain students with specific curriculum group for the rest of the semester? I don't know if you can. I think it's only for that session. Now, if you have one session that you're going to keep open for all your lectures, then I believe then it should save those groups. But if you have separate sessions for each lecture like I do, then yeah, you'd probably have to reassign it every time. Yeah, I don't think you could save an assignment. Yep. I think you create permanent groups within Blackboard. You could do that. You can create groups. I don't know if those are the same groups, though, that you would see in Collaborate. Those groups, I think, if they're working on groups projects, and then they can submit a project as a group. So I think that group is independent than the group in Ultra, I think. Um, I could be wrong there. I, I haven't used it. So if you start to break out groups by clicking, uh, use, clicking the Start button, uh, yeah, you just come here to this third button here and you click breakout groups and then you click start and when you click start and I can do this right you click start everyone is now okay everyone's now in their group they're all connecting okay I'm not sure if you can hear me in your group let me stop this Okay, so um, so that's how it's done. And I don't know if you could have heard me while you were um, in your groups or not. Okay, I was talking while you were in your groups. I'm not sure if you heard me in your group. I don't think you can, yeah. So basically the groups, you're in your own kind of private session. And then when I hit stop, everyone joins back. Now, uh, now what I did, what I did see is some people go off when I did that. So I don't know if that's a bug or not. Uh, it looks like everyone kind of had to reconnect after. So, um, yeah. And then, I, oh, you, okay, so I can join the group as well. Okay. Uh, if you want them to come back from the breakout group, yeah, there, there was just, there was a stop button there that looked kind of like this, Jennifer, at the top. I just clicked the stop button and everyone came out of the groups. Okay. Um, if you Zoom, can you do anything to prevent them from downloading recordings? Uh, I think so, but I think you need to do that through your account settings. So let me just make sure. So if you go into your Zoom application, now now um, you need to get, I think, a Zoom Pro license for this. 
So make sure if you haven't already, uh, request a Zoom Pro license from IT, just send them an email, they'll give you the Zoom Pro license. And in here, there are some, I thought you can get to your settings. Oh, here it is. I think you, here it is. This little gear icon up here. And click on settings. And you come down here to recording. And see where it says, um, oh, okay. So you're asking about downloads. Okay. So this is where it's going to be downloaded. Okay. So. Yeah, so maybe what you can do is you can re record it, you can download it instead of to the cloud, download it to your computer, and then upload it to Blackboard. But when you upload it to Blackboard, they can probably download it, unless there is an option not to. So that may be how you have to do it. Let's go into Blackboard for a second here. If I was going to do a file, and then if I were to upload the file, yeah, then they can they can definitely download it regardless of what you put here. Yeah, so I'm going to say that um, I don't know if there's a way to prevent them from downloading. Let me go into the class meetings. Bill, can I uh, ask a question related? Yeah, sure. When I talked to Ben Brown in IT, he said that there was a way to save a Zoom recording directly to Ensemble that we just okay. had to contact IT. So if the recording goes to Ensemble instead of us recording it and downloading it ourselves, is there a way to block downloading something that we link from Ensemble? So I think what you would need to do then is you would have to prevent the download in Ensemble. And um, unfortunately, I don't know Ensemble well enough to see if there's a way to prevent downloading here. But at the same time, though, if when you create a Zoom session, right, it is going to record it. See, um, where was that? Okay, record the meeting. Okay, so yeah, but if you don't, the problem is if you don't record it, they can never see it. And I don't think the issue is recording. I think the problem is with downloading, right? So let me do this. Let me go into my last semester where I actually did a Zoom meeting because I was trying it out with my database class. And here it is in the cloud recordings. Okay, so you have, you can publish it so they can see it. And, oh, it doesn't look like there's an option to download it. They can't download it. They can only view it. Although it does say file size. Let's click on this. Oh, they can do it from here, I'm sorry. Yeah, so here they can download. or share it. So I, um, I'm not sure if there's a way to turn this off from, from Blackboard. I can look into it, but but I'm not sure if you can. Let's see if anyone else is. Oh, does Zoom meeting have some Zoom have a similar? Function? Can I check who attended after the session is over? Um, not with Collaborate, unfortunately. Um, you cannot see who attended the session. That that's one of the complaints that I have because sometimes you may want to see who watched it, and not even who attended it, but sometimes I mean, well, who watched the lecture? Who's actually participating? Now you could. Um, you could download a file, upload the file, and then put on statistics tracking on the file, but that's a lot of work for every, every lecture. So what I do is I give a class assignment that they have to submit 
and that's how I make sure they watched it. So, uh, okay. Holly says Collaborate Ultra lets you look at a report after the session, and you can see how long the students were in there in addition to who was there. Okay. Huh. But that's who attended, not who watched it, right, Holly? So let me see if I could find that report. Oops, let me go back here. Go back into Ultra. Let me look at my recordings. Oh, but I'd have to, okay, so here's all my recordings. And I'd have to go a little bit further out. Okay, so let's see. Is it here? For the, for the live ones, if you go back to where the actual sessions were, you have it checked so you're only seeing things that are upcoming. Right. But if you go back, you can see the previous sessions and then you can click on the dot and it'll have a thing about a report. Okay. So previous sessions. Right. And so if you click on the dot, um, you can see. Excellent. Okay. And then you can view that report and it has oh, a this is of who they were there, how long they joined. Oh, this is never used. Again, this is only who attend, right? If they watched it after, right. it you wouldn't see that. that. Okay. Yeah. So this is good to know. So see, there are some things that even I don't, I don't use. So this is good. Thank you. And that is great. And you can see when they, when they joined and how long they were there. And you can see in the summer, I don't get many participants. Okay. Um, recordings. And, and, and again, look, I'm not sure about this. I'm gonna look into that. Uh, Enjoying says very much. Okay, great, you're welcome. Okay. Can someone post a Brown? Yes, um, they are posted, Jennifer, uh, on our Brown Center uh, website. And I can have Christopher, when he's done posting it, send out that link. I think all. Okay, yeah, and, and that's probably true, Bonnie, by default. They can probably just join it. Okay, great. Okay. If you want to come back, from there. yes, we'll I'll post a URL. I'll have to find that, but I'll find it and post it. Coupon links is in Zoom class meetings. If I create an assignment for the day and include a link in a Zoom meeting, yeah, I can include that. That is good. If if you could do that, I'm not sure. Uh, I can include Yeah, I, I I don't think so, Joel. I don't think you could post a within the actual Zoom meeting a link. Maybe you can post a, a link to the file. Oops, I'm in the wrong course. Sorry. Edit. And, uh, oh, maybe in the description, you can put it here. So if you have a link to a file in Blackboard, you can copy that link and paste it here. So um, that's one way to do it. Put a link in the description. Just put Google and see what happens. Okay, so yeah, so you can. Let's see if it shows up here. So they, they click on it. 
And then maybe you can have a link here that says, it doesn't look like it actually makes it a active link, unfortunately, but maybe you can have a link and say, make sure you get this file during this session. Something like that. That's probably the best way that I can think of doing it. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Boris, I believe you can check who attended the Zooming when you go into your Zoom account. Click on reports. Okay. Um, okay. So you'd actually have to go into the account then, right? You'd have to go into the Zoom application, which I have open already. And would it be in here, Leva? Here's the meeting here. Let's I used it last. There is something I used it uh, last semester, and I'm trying to figure out exactly where it is. But there is, I, I've got notes on it somewhere, but there is something in Zoom that will show who attended the meetings. Okay. All right. I have to find that too. Now, this page, by the way, these are also accessible through Blackboard, so you can see your recorded sessions. But maybe if we open it, and I guess I, let me go through the blackboard. And go to final review meeting here. Oops. Oh, it doesn't show the. Here we go. Previous meetings. So the 203 meeting. Yeah, I only see the recordings here. If you go back to the previous meeting tab, it looked like it had a button that said report. Okay. Sorry, go back into here. Previous meeting. Uh, and here's the report. Yeah, this isn't one I had for. Okay, so it looks like. Thank you. Um, it looks like this is. So, okay, so that wasn't very intuitive. So basically, what I had to do is I had to go to all my Zoom meetings recording. Now it looks like there may be a certain time, the eighth, but I don't see my Zoom meeting from last semester. Expire maybe after a month. Bill, I think the reports when you go to report expire, and I also think the um, the recordings expire after. Okay. I think. Okay, it makes sense because this one's and again, this was a meeting that I had with my with fellow faculty, so um, I'm, this is not of interest to me. I'd want to see the ones from my class. But I'm thinking, yeah, like you said, if it was recent, I would see it here and then good, click on the report. Okay, sorry, I don't have these. I don't, I don't use Zoom all that often, so. All right, and that looks like that's all the questions. So let me, before I end, let me go ahead and find the link for the Brown Center. And I'll send everyone the link to the recordings. Now, so far, as far as I know, only the last two were posted. Here it is here. OK. And here's the link to the webinars. OK, so those are all what we call the webinars. And the first two are at the top of that page. So the first one, again, is when I went over the integration with my uh, online learning platform, which was MindTap. And then this went over the grade book and how to copy from a previous course. And then the second session was how I was scheduling and creating assignments and tests. So those two were posted. So we still have to post the one on Respondus and on the lectures. So, so that's it. Now, um, let me put my email here, too. 
So if you need any help, I'll be happy to meet with you uh, independently or even with your department if you'd like to go over any of the stuff that I covered. And again, I may not have all the answers, but hopefully I can I can help you figure out some things if I haven't covered questions. Okay. So let me stop the recording and thanks everyone for for